I'm Judith Coates. I'm design director. I've been here um, 32 years. But Martin's going to talk. I can be that. <laughs> 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 so Martin Abbott, I'm, I'm creative director. I've been here 44 years. Amazing. Mm. So can you tell I've never me seen anything like this? <laughs> <laughs> been a lot, but nothing like this. Is, this is the new normal, isn't it? Um, yeah. Could you tell me a bit about Abraham Moon, please? Established in 1837. Um, you'll have to chip in, Martin. Um, so we're a vertical woolen mill. So we do all of the uh, processing from fibre to finish cloth. Um, we don't have our own sheet, but we uh, source the wool. That's, that's what we do from um, all over the world. But um, so I, we have a Shet Shetland type fibre that comes from New Zealand um, and a lamb's wool that comes from um, South Africa, mainly South Africa, isn't it? We do use some British wool uh, as well. So um, obviously that's part of it as well. Um, so, so we, I believe we're the biggest one manufacturer in England because when I started in 1975 we weren't even the biggest in Geisley. We were the smallest mill in Geisley. <laughs> so we've come a long way. Yes, a lot has changed. So um, over the years, um, it's the original Abraham Moon, um, was he? Run over in a in a, an accident or something. Is that right? A horse and car horse and accident. Car accident. Yeah. And that's when um, the Walsh family took it over at that point. Is that right? Yeah, yes. I, in don't quote me. I think it was in the 1950s. I think. Yeah. Anyway, it's been in the, uh, the hands of the Walsh family longer than the Moon family. So it's a family business. Know, it's yeah. it's a family business. Um, uh, third generation. Yeah, yeah. So when I joined um, 32 years ago, it was it was all apparel. Um, now we've got three divisions: um, apparel, furnishings, and accessories. So we've expanded, which is which is great because they each division helps each other really because they, they inspire each other. So um, yeah, we went to furnishings about probably 15 years ago now, 14, 15 years. And accessories probably 20 years ago, it might have been, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, but we so, use the same yarns throughout all three divisions. Uh, our core Shetland and Lambswool yarns are, are used throughout the divisions, so it, it's really good in that respect. Um, the, the split's about 50% on apparel, 25% on furnishing fabrics, and 25% on, we, we say fringe goods, throws, uh, scarves, stones. Kind of thing. Um, and in apparel, we've um, always been uh, very much an export company, more so on apparel, I would say, wouldn't you, at the moment? Yeah. Um, so there were times when we were sort of 70% export. Um, I think it's a little bit less now, perhaps, but uh, yes. Yeah, the, the, the furnishing uh, business is predominantly uh, in the UK, and a lot of the you know we have a Bronte trademark, which is for the yeah accessories, yeah accessories. Yes. So yeah, so Bronte is predominantly UK, uh, Japan, and Korea. So we do, yeah, we've had a lot of um, sales throughout Europe and the Far East, and you know we've done a lot of export, particularly for apparel fabrics. Obviously, some of the some of the processes will be um, very much the same as they have been. But some of the processes are, um, you know, how have you innovated? And I guess one of the things would be certainly you've diversified the, um, the product offer. We listen to customers, basically. Um, which a lot of mills didn't do in the past. They thought, well, we'll just continue to do what we've always done. And we know best, but we, we're good listeners. So, we've, you know, we, we've been through a lot of reinventions. Um, and... and you know, the time has come up once again, we've got to reinvent ourselves. Mm. I think now more than ever, we need to be different to, to be successful and to survive. You know, we need to, we need to have something new. Um, yeah, we've, we've, we've always adapted. We've always been flexible and, and we've always found a way through all, all the problems uh, over the years, certainly last 40 odd years anyway. When I started, we uh, mainly made uh, ladies and children's 
coatings for the likes of CNA in the in the UK. And obviously, you know, children don't, you know, well, it wasn't long before children didn't wear those kind of coats. And so we adapted chains. As Tiba said, we were a very early exporter, in, particularly into Europe. Um, I'm, I'm rather than we, we listened to what the Europeans wanted, so I think we were quite early on. We made more colourful, stronger designs for apparel than maybe some of the other UK mills. Also, we've got um, our design team very much works with the customers, so we do a lot of sales as well, which really helps us with our product development. So we're there in front of the customers ourselves. We go to the shows, but we also go out and see the customers. So yeah, it was um, quite a new thing. When I started here, most of my contemporaries didn't actually, they had salespeople and designers and the salesmen went to see the customers and then came back and told the designers what to do. And our current MDs, uh, John, his, his father, who I uh, started working with, he, he encouraged me to, to go see the customers. And, and see what they want to. And it, so they didn't lose yeah, it anything in translation. It really does make a difference. We've noticed, you know, if, if we've stopped going to see the customers as designers, then we've noticed the difference. So um, we try to keep that going. How has this translated into your your latest collection? Then what what have you used, and what you know, what taught me through well, the latest collection? Not physically being able to see the customers or the agents as much. We've done a lot of a lot more listening, I suppose, recently. And we, we sort of, um, we, we've we noticed the requirements for certain types of cloths that um, we, could, we couldn't just carry on with the same fabrics that we've always made. We, they're there and we still make them, but we need some newer fabrics, newer qualities and types that, that will appeal to the different marketplace out there now. I mean, obviously, um, more formal clothing is 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 going to be less important. So we need to try and tap into the more um, uh, relaxed, sort of casual side of it from our point of view and what we can do for that. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, you know, there's been a trend for a while for lighter weight fabrics, but we have some restrictions there with having wool and spun yarns as to how light we can go on a jacketing. But we We've introduced worsted yarns and and quite a lot of cotton recently, mm. cotton blends, uh, both to make a lighter weight and also makes a more casual looking fabric and uh, and it hits certain That's price points surprise. as well. So it's three three ways why why it's much better you know to, to actually have that in our collection. It doesn't work for everybody, but we've got such a varied market that we need to appeal to uh, a wide variety. Particularly of now we have a huge array of customers right from very traditional to very contemporary. So, um, Why do you think um, made in the UK is, is important to, to your customers or is it important to your customers? It is. Mm. Um, authenticity really. Um, you know we do make a quality product and there's there's a heritage and a history behind it and uh, probably increasingly customers it's something they can market something our customers can market to, to their to their customers um, people like us to to know what the story is behind the fabric we we introduced the collection 10 years 10 or 12 years ago I think quite early on we saw the heritage would be a big thing uh, so we marketed we call it the heritage collection, which is the various different fabrics we've made over the years, but we, we told the story behind those fabrics and that was very successful. Maybe a bit too successful because heritage is important now, but I think we've, we've dealt, dwelt on that a little bit too long actually. It's still important, but um, it, it's, uh, there's more, more than heritage is required now. Mm. Uh, because it was so basis, successful, yeah. we have, you know, for once we've been a little bit slow to change. And that, if anything's good's come out of COVID, it, it's we've seen the need to change a bit more quickly. What are some of the the um, future trends you think um, are emerging? You said obviously um, more casual, more um, mm. more relaxed price point. I guess. Are there any? Well, traceability, sustainability. Um, yeah, like I say, there's got to be a story behind the product, whatever that story is. Um, we do a little bit with recycled wools and recycled cashmere now. 
Um, but I think anything that's a little bit more added value as well, um, you know, put something a little bit special into the cloth, whether it's part of the construction or the yarns or something different about that, in addition to the whole sustainability and, um, you know, traceability as well. If we can combine everything and have, have products that tell the story and tick the boxes and, and you know, uh, I think that's where we need to be at the moment anyway but then things change, you know, so we have to keep, we have to keep listening. Uh, quite a lot of it's out of our control. The same fabric can be used in, in quite different ways, very traditional, very contemporary, exactly the same fabric. Um, we need to get stronger on social media so we can show what customers are doing with our fabrics or, or highlight the, the fashionable, the, the way Customers are using our fabrics in different ways. We need to push rather than pushing how our customers are using them in the very traditional ways. You've done quite well um, in the past of, of working with companies who were proud to say that, you know, this is an Abraham Moon fabric. Yeah. Do you think that's something that will grow? And how, what do you think, what do you think they, they want from that sort of relationship? The authenticity. Uh, of the product, the, the quality that yeah, the quality you know, it, needs to be there. Yeah, it is a sustainable product. We are predominantly using wool and natural fibres, so it's a sustainable product. Um, a lot of our products are traceable right back to the farm. Yeah, I think collabs are very important. Very important. Mm. Um, obviously, they've got to be the right ones for us as well as the right ones for the customer. Mm. And we've spent a lot of the last. Um, last few years de developing our sort of logos and labels just so that, that you know it fits really well with the products so we have got a good collection of, of um, labels and things that people can use in their promotion so and we're always developing them aren't we so yeah, yeah. and we re more recently we've, uh, we've had the sustainability labels and swing tags that we, we send with the brochures about um, the traceability uh, of our products so that that's quite new and you know it's just taking off and we're working on a little bit more um, so uh, it's all important just not to stop we just need to keep developing uh, the problems the customers want all these things but they don't really want to pay anymore for no. <laughs> and it's cost. It's cost people will want to come and have a look uh, have a look around and your customers um, you know that is one of the the good things I guess about yeah. working with UK customers What's, yeah. what's one of the things that they find surprising about when they visit? What, what kind of stands out and what? The num well, first of all, when they walk into our showroom, they're quite shocked because they expect something very traditional and like a boardroom. And, and uh, our, our showroom and our design studio here are quite modern. So they're, they're a bit surprised with that. And then after that, it's the number of processes involved Obviously, they can hear, they can see it from start to finish. That surprises them. Uh, for example, like in our colour blends, there are quite a lot where we've got six or eight different colours yeah, in a it, blend to make one colour. So that, that's always quite interesting for them. It's an interesting product to see processing. You know, a, a woolen spun product is because of like the blends and things. You know, it's, mm. you know the card, the blending and the carding and then the spinning before you even get to the warping and weaving is really interesting. So. So we have a lot of customers that have come and, and, and done blogs or videos mm -hmm. of, of the processing. And the finishing as well, because that, you know, a woolen cloth, there's so many different things you can do with it in the finish as well. So that's part of the design as well. So, uh, yeah, really interesting. So. Where, where the, for the latest collection, where, where would you say the main in, um, inspirations have come from for this season? Mm. <laughs> Okay, it's difficult because we don't necessarily follow the trends as such. We we just know, we like to think we know our our customers. It's, it's an yeah. evolution. Yeah. From from one season to the next, really. You know, menswear doesn't change that much. It's grey, blue, brown, green. You know, okay, there are, you introduce fashion colours. Um, I think it's more about fabric types. It's the fabric oh, types yeah, and, 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 that change more. and a lot of it's yeah. about the way it's presented, mm. about the way you present the fabric to the customer. 
to, to give him some inspiration. I mean, we do we do trend boards. Oh, with different groups anyway. This is, I mean, we do this for our this is for our own benefit. That's something we call relax tailoring. Um, Savile Row was very classic. This one was a bit more coastal school. Late night lounge. Nice. Um, office prep we have. So we knew that everybody was going to be looking more. Nice. Uh -huh. So they're not necessarily trends taken from Trend Union or anything like that. They're our they're our trends, if you know what I mean. But they're it's like Martin says they evolve, and they're, um, a lot of it's based yeah, we on. We look at the we look yeah, at the trends. We do, but, but a lot of it's based on where we need to be and where we think we need to go. Most um, a lot of it's from our customers. Mm. Certain customers that you that you really listen to more than others, who, who are quite directional and in, in advance of what, the, where things are going. Mm. So you kind of pick up, you know, the more people you speak to, the more people you listen to, you pick up, you know, two or three people are saying the same thing, then it gives you, give you some direction. Um, the one, one advantage, again, of COVID is that in the past, we've not really shown these boards to our customers unless they've been here at the mill. But because we've done like a digital presentation this time, then we've been able to show the the trends before the fabrics and patterns, which has been very you know really appreciated. Because otherwise, you're just showing a collection of fabrics without the inspiration yeah. behind them. Hmm. Um, so again, we were you know saying not so long I was saying what. Well, We've got designers in a marketing team. Why didn't we think to, you know, it's a digital age. Why didn't we think to do show on Zoom and do it all digitally, you know, as well as it's sort of um, accelerated yeah. things that were were yes, happening, yes, isn't it? This, but you know, I'm a bit annoyed that we didn't think to do it before. We should have we should have thought to do it before. We've been very successful for a, quite a number of years now, and sometimes it takes you know a bit of adversity to, you know, to get you out of your comfort zone. I think everyone's out of their comfort zone at the moment, but um, it's not like you say from a creative perspective and a and yeah. a, an accelerate like and a change. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, we're not. We've never been afraid, if, you know, to go off on one. We'll, go, if, you know, if we want to do something, we we do it. We are a design led company, and you know, if I shudder to think what. You know, if, if we want to make a collection and everything was lime green and orange, you know, we could do it. We'd be out of business, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of companies, you're not able to do that. You'd have to, you know, have it approved and passed and sales would have to agree. And So it's been able to adapt. And is that, what, what would you say are the main things that characterise um, Abraham Moon then? Is that... that Absolutely. Yeah, we're versatile. We adapt. Yeah. We're des design led. We, you know, we. Yeah, there's a, there's so much that we can do here. Because we're in control of it, you know. When you're a vertical mill, in particular, you're in control of all the processing, so you can get something through really quickly, as a development. Mm. Um, as soon as we start buying, you know, because we do buy, obviously, some yarns, worsteds, cottons, bowhair, well, uh, and fancy yarns generally it gives us a problem yeah because you're you're relying on someone else yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever as soon as we rely on somebody else yeah. generally it, it does yeah you know not that we don't have problems in-house but it, it tends to create more problems you can do most things under one yeah. room for search yeah. and we're very as a company we're very linked the production to design and to sales we talk a lot you know it's um, so I think we work things out. It's not, you know, there's always problems, but you work it out. You do work it out and everybody's involved. So it, it is very good in that respect. And we're never satisfied with what we do. No. <laughs> Judith will testify. <laughs> uh, but I just believe if you don't, if you're not looking and criticising what you're doing all the time, you get complacent. So, um, yeah, we never really step back, do we, and say, 
That's a good job. No, no. <laughs> can always do better. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for that. The other thing about our company is that we we invest back into the company. So, you know, you're talking about um, following the times. We have our heritage, but then we have, we make sure we have the machinery that will make it. So, you know, it's a very good, it's old and new together, isn't it? It's the heritage, but the new um, innovation. Yeah, let, let's not yeah. emphasise the heritage too much, but no. we have it, but, you know, it, it's... Uh... I think we need to, we use what we've, what we've done in the past, but we use it in a new way, you know, um, we develop from it. Um, a lot of our heritage is just the experience and, and the, the workforce and the experience that's there. And, and then we can move on and do new things because of the experience. Um, so. Yeah, I get very excited when I see new brands using, or not, you know, fabric that, would, that we've had for years, but they're using it a different way and they think, blimey, you know what, is it, there is a, there is a future for tweed, you know, because there's a new generation, they're using it a different way, and for them it's fashion. Yeah. It's not, you know, a hunting, shooting, fishing kind of thing. Um, and that is, that is happening, that is happening. Problem is they're quite, they tend to be the smaller ones at the moment. A lot of these small companies are growing very quickly because of social media, they can grow very quickly. Definitely, it, it opens a lot of opportunities and, and also, it's, it becomes a lot more visible, so you can kind of track those little trends quite, quite yeah. quickly. It's surprising where some of the what, what, seems a lot happening in Korea at the moment, also in China. Which are um, some of the most interesting new markets for you then? Well, China's interesting because of the, you know there's 1.4 billion of them, <laughs> mm. so it's it's got to be interesting. It's like it's and it's Korea growing. as well, yeah, Korea. And as well. Korea because. There are the, some great brands coming out of Korea. Uh, Japan's always interesting because they they really love the authentic products, and they you know they a lot of the Japanese buyers know more about British fabrics than we do. They're so stylish, aren't they? Um, you know. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice I think you. that's everything. Um, I was after. Thank you so much for agreeing to that. That's been really useful. No, Thank no you. Problem. All right. Uh, Thanks, Tara.